Okay, so after your sample is polished, we're going to rinse it under the sink. If you have some alcohol, then you can dry it off. Um, I can see moderate scratches on this one, but overall it should look a uh, polished finish. Okay. To clean the wheel, you can add a little bit of water onto it, spin it. Okay. Um, for this sample, it is uh, low carbon steel. So to etch it, we're going to look at this packet that's above the fume hood. And we're going to look for something that has um, steel on it. So we have iron and steel here. Uh, we're going to see that this is called nitol, which is mostly methanol with a little bit of nitric acid in it. That is located underneath the fume hood here. Uh, that's going to be in this glass container. I'm right handed, so I'm going to put the glove on my left hand. Uh, one of the most important things when we etch is that we get a lot of the etch into the swab. We should swab etch on steel, aluminum alloys, titanium alloys, uh, stainless steel, anything that will spontaneously form an oxide. Okay, I'm loosening the swab because my etch is mostly alcohol, and as I swab, if that alcohol evaporates, I will stain the sample, and you'll see like a rainbow colors in the optical microscope if that happens. Okay. So what we're looking for is the sample uh, go from a mirror finish to a cloudy finish, and then we're going to dunk it in a beaker of water. So you can come in close for this. So we see a mirror finish first. You can zoom in a little bit. So you want to uh, saturate the sample with the liquid and don't let it dry out. And keep swabbing in circles like this. So we start to see the cloudy finish. Once you see that, you can dunk it in the water to stop the edge.